remember that our today's topic we are running about how to enter into spiritual dimensions of prophecy how to enter into spiritual realms of prophecy remember that it is in the interest of the kingdom of god for us christian believers to know more about the realm of prophecy back in the old testament there used to be schools of prophets prophet elijah and the school of prophet and also prophet elisha had a school of prophet based on the information in the old testament we can learn that the art of prophecy can be learned or you can learn the art of prophesying through apprenticeship or running through somebody that has ventured into the deep realms of prophecy you can study under his mentorship and you can be able to learn more about prophecy you can also be able to receive the 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 prophetic realm or prophetic grace through impartation or serving a prophet hallelujah if you serve a prophet you are most likely to receive a prophetic impartation remember the bible says that whoever shall receive a prophet shall receive a prophetic reward you are to receive something from a prophet another avenue for you to receive these prophetic realms you can receive a prophetic grace or a prophetic realm through a gift of the spirit of god remember the, the bible tells us that there are nine charismatic gifts and among us the nine charismatic gifts we have the gift of prophecy hallelujah glory be to god one of the things that you need to understand is that the art of prophecy there is a word in greek that calls prophecy propheteo which simply means to utter forth or to declare a thing which can only be known by divine revelation so if you want to enter into deep realms of prophecy be ready to utter forth or to declare a thing sometimes it can be spontaneous something that you never knew about but you hear in the spirit there is something that is being developed there is something that is being conceived in your spirit and you need to utter it forth hallelujah especially during these final moments at time moments the lord is continually speaking to us and the lord can use anybody the lord can use anything in order to pass a prophetic message hallelujah people of god you need to learn how to exercise this gift it is available to us i know that not all believers are called to be prophets but i want you to know that each believer can prophesy you may not be called to be a prophet but the prophetic realm can be availed to you as a believer hallelujah you need to know that you can prophesy i remember during uh, the the previous broadcast when uh, apostle stephen was sharing he said that do not forget to prophesy or do not forgo to prophesy i want you to understand as a christian believer you can be able to prophesy hallelujah in the book of first corinthian chapter number 14 verse number 31 first corinthians chapter number 14 verse number 31 the bible says 
for you for you may all prophesy one by one that all may run and all may be comforted i'm leading first corinthians chapter number 14 verse number 31 saint paul is saying that believers have the ability to prophesy and they can do it so that the body of christ can be comforted prophetic messages and prophetic liams they comfort the body of christ who is the body of christ the body of christ is the church and who is the church the church is community of believers you and i when we have decided for example even during this online fellowship it is a church it is an online altar the bible says where two or three are gathered for my name i am there and it becomes an online church viewer the spirit of prophecy is among us in this online fellowship because we have gathered here for the purpose of worshiping christ for the purpose of hearing from christ jesus hallelujah saint paul is saying the spirit of prophets are subject to the prophets kwa ruga ya kiswahili roza manabi huwa zinakaa na manabi hallelujah glory be to jesus as you are continuing to exercise your prophetic mandate the spirit of prophesying can abide in you hallelujah number two desire to prophesy desire build a passion build a desire that i can be used as a prophet of god in this hour I can be able to see beyond the curtain of time. I can be able to see the past, the present, and the future based on the will of God, based on prophetic knowledge of God through the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. If you read the same book in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 14, verse number 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather you may prophesy saint paul is speaking to us the online church of today and anybody that is watching this broadcast across the globe whether you are watching on online on facebook you are watching online on youtube or through any social avenue that you are watching this broadcast the spirit of god is saying to us that we should desire to prophesy it is a spiritual gift desire to have it and you can be able to work with it in the in the same chapter chapter number 14 verse number 39 the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, verse number 39. Therefore, brethren, desire once more. Desire is a magnet that attracts the prophetic anointing. If you don't desire, you probably won't not. Desire. Hallelujah number three look for a vision if you want to venture into prophetic realms and prophetic calls like code like the passcode like the password you look for a vision Have you ever been praying or worshiping? You are in prayer playing. You are, you are presenting the needs 
of your fellow human being, of your fellow brothers and sisters, of men and women across the world, you are in prayer, playing. Then a picture appears in your mind. You are in prayer yet there is a picture that is appearing in your eyes as you are praying. In your mind, you are able to perceive through the mind there is a picture that is appearing. That is what I mean by looking for a vision. Then, don't ignore those pictures. God may be speaking to you. Even if the image that appears seems insignificant. A very important key to receiving prophetic revelation is to look for visions in your minds and the eye and then interpret them by the power of the spiritual knowledge. Hallelujah. I want us to, to go in the Bible and see some of the uh, prophetic messages that came through prophetic visions and prophetic pictures. I want us to go into the book of Jeremiah chapter number 1, verse number 11. Jeremiah chapter number 1, verse number 11. The Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what are you seeing? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Verse number 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast wild seen, for I will ask my word to perform it. Hallelujah. This is a prophetic vision that is appearing like a picture. For example, what would you do if you are praying in prayer? Then you saw a picture like a branch of a tree in your eye. Would you ignore it? Would you ask God, what is this saying? What is the meaning of this? Hallelujah. I have heard people who are, they were in prayer. They saw like big portion of bread. And then when we went in prayer to inquire from the Lord. It was a prophetic message that there are broad covenants that are running in the family. Hallelujah. Prophetic mes messages are sometimes very symbolic. For example, you can be in prayer praying for somebody then all of a sudden you see a mountain. And then this person is trying to climb the mountain with a lot of struggle. Then as you are continuing to pray, the Spirit of God reveals to you in that mountain base, you see something written marriage. What is the prof uh, prophetic implication of this message? This person is undergoing struggle in the area of marriage. Hallelujah. I'm just giving a few examples of what I've encountered in my prophetic ministry when God has given me time and opportunity to enter into the prophetic realms as I minister to people. Let us continue. Jeremiah saw the, the, the vision of the almond branch. And then immediately, in verse number, number, number 12, the Lord, the, the Lord said unto me, Thou hast seen very well, for I will ask my word to perform it. Verse 
just a simple branch <laughs> but it carries a prophetic message that I'm going to follow up with the word to perform it. Hallelujah. The vision meant that God was ready to perform his word in the Hebrew language, the ones tra translated Almond 3, Shaked, and Lady, both have a similar sound when pronounced. Therefore, sometimes when God gives us a vision in our mind eye, the interpretation of it may be linked to the pronunciation of what we saw. Sometimes you may be, you may see something in the spirit, but the message, the prophetic message is linked to the pronunciation of what you have seen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. What you see in the spirit. Maybe the Lord is the message of what you are seeing is hiding in the pronunciation of the word. I have had people who received prophetic messages just mere by receiving a word in the spirit and then they went to inquire more about the meaning of the word hallelujah however sometimes the interpretation may not be linked to the pronunciation after the vision jeremiah had another one which is described in jeremiah chapter number one verse number 14. let us read verse number 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me. Jeremiah chapter number 1 verse number 13. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What are you seeing? And I said, I am seeing a pot. The face therefore it is toward the north. The Lord said unto me, Out of the north, and evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. Here, the Lord is using as a prophetic symbol of a pot. Hallelujah. This is so real. Myself, in my ministration, I've encountered this. But mine was not related to the pot of the of the of the attack coming from the north but what i saw as i was ministering to somebody i saw a pot then i inquired from the lord what is this pot talking about in the life of this person and the spirit of god said unto me it means there is witchcraft dominance in the family or somebody has used a satanic pot to bewitch the family. And when I inquired deeper from the person that I was ministering to, the person said, it's true. In our family, we have been experiencing battles of witchcraft. Even people confess that they are going to bewitch us. Then another time, as I was ministering to another person, I saw a pot. And then I inquired from the Lord, what is this pot speaking to this person? And the, the Lord told me, it means that, it means that, in this family, they have been attacked by the spirit of drunkenness, or there is dominance of drunkenness in the family. Remember, in the book of Ezekiel, if you read the book of Ezekiel. There is a time when Ezekiel experienced a, prof a, 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 a prophetic pot that was used to capture the people in the town, to enslave the people in the town, to make them captive. The people of the town were like meat, and the town was like a big pot. So, do not ignore such visions and pictures that you see in the spirit. This time, Jeremiah saw a boiling pot, 
tilting away from the north. This was a prophetic image which signified that a disaster was going to come from the north to the inhabitants of Judah. Vision was one of the main ways that God spoke to his prophets in the Bible. For example, Habakkuk the prophet declared he would watch to see what God would say to him. If you read Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse number 1. Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse number 1. Habakkuk was ready to venture into prophetic realms. Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse number 1. I will start upon my watch and see and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he, may, he that may run may read it. Even before the Lord spoke through a vision to Habakkuk, Habakkuk himself was ready to watch into the spiritual realm and already purposed to watch into the spiritual realms. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. The Lord can use you. Are you willing? Are you into deep desire to watch into the spirit? To watch. Sometimes you may be somewhere seated up in your normal way of life. You may be driving. You may be on the shopping uh, on the shopping panel. You may be in your studies, but deep in the spirit, you are watching. You have allowed your spiritual. Actually, uh, the, the prophetic eye, we call it the, the, the third eye. <laughs> it's like the third eye. On top of the normal eyes, you are seeing through another eye in the spirit that is able to see, behold, the curtain of time and the, the past, the present, and the future. Sometimes as, a, uh, as I'm prophesying to people in my ministration, sometimes the Spirit of God even gives me names concerning a person that is connected to another, uh, to the person that I'm ministering to. And then on inquiring, what is the significance of this name to you? as I'm prophesying to you. And the person would say that this is my so-and-so. I know this person. There is a certain history between me and this person. Hallelujah. Let us continue. It was so normal for prophets to receive their revelations in the form of visions. That before they were called prophets, they were called seers. You can be a seer in the things of the Spirit, in the things of God. Remember what, the, uh, what God said to, to his prophet, Ezekiel. He said, I have called you as a watchman. <laughs> Are you ready to be a watchman in the things of the Spirit? Remember, if you have allowed yourself to be a watchman in the things of the spirit, even your dreams can be prophetic. Your dreams can have prophetic messages. Lake Abu Yakata. Have you ever had a dream and then you came to find out that later that this dream came true? These are prophetic dreams. The Lord allowed you to see in your subconscious mind. I, I know if you read the, the songs of Solomon, <laughs> the Bible says, 
Solomon wrote and said, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. I was asleep, but my heart was awake. If you continue to venture into prophetic realms, your heart or your spirit is awake even though you are asleep, according to the standard of a human being. Hallelujah. We should simply look for what the Lord will show us. Look in the spirit for what the Lord will show you. What the Lord will allow you to see in the spirit. Even as I am speaking to you right now, the spirit of God of prophecy can be building something in your mind and in your spirit. Number four, be sensitive to what bubbles up in your spirit. Sensitive to what bubbles up in your spirit. You know, bubbling up is something that you have not planned, you have not thought about, but there is an idea about somebody that is developing upon your mind instantly. That is what is called a bubble. The way a bubble develops instantly. Hallelujah. Is to utter or to speak. Beware and sensitive to the fact that prophecies will often bubble up from within you and continue to flow as you speak it forth. The Hebrew word most often, often translated prophecy is naba, which literally means to bubble up. The Greek word for prophecy is naba. Naba. I know it may be sounding like tanks, <laughs> but naba is to bubble up in Greek. Hallelujah. I know time is, is running, so I'm going to rush. And I know you are going to be blessed. People of God, if you read the Bible in the book of John, chapter number 7, verse number 38. Let us read John, chapter number 7, verse number 38. Rabu kutabayanda rababu zaya. Riki bakayanda rababu zaya. Listen. He that believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse number 39. But this speck of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. As you, as you prophesy, allow, allow yourself to flow with the ones that are coming out of you. The Bible is saying that he that will believe, out of your belly there shall flow rivers of living water. It is that there is something that is deep inside you, but it is supposed to be spoken out. It is supposed to be expressed. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have people that have received prophetic messages and I've also encountered this prophetic grace. As I am praying for somebody, then all of a sudden, uh, the pain or the situation that this person is experiencing is transferred to my body. I'm able to know exactly which part of the body this person is paining from. And even sometimes I can feel the intensity of pain, the intensity of challenge. I can be able to feel it. Hallelujah. 
So, when you are an intercessor, when you have given up yourself to pray for the needs of others, don't forget sometimes whatever you are feeling in your spirit may be connected to whatever they are passing through. Even if they are not near your vicinity, they can be even to another continent. They can be even to another country, to another county, to another place. Whatever you're feeling in the spirit can be connected to them. Hallelujah. The Bible continues to teach us if we read the Bible in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 13. 1 Kings chapter number 13 verse number 20 to 21. It's a very important passage that I would like us to read before we end. We are almost concluding. And it came to pass, First Kings chapter number 13, verse number 20. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came upon the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus is the Lord. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. So, imagine, this was a scenario between the young prophet and the old prophet. The young prophet heard from the Lord and went to stop the evil altar that had been built in Judah. And after passing the prophetic message, according to the instruction, this person was not to eat or go back in the same way that he had come. Then there was another old prophet, and he heard that there is another new prophet that has heard from God. He invited this young prophet and made, made this young prophet to break the, the promises or the instructions that had been given by God. So sometimes as you are venturing into the things of the of prophetic realms, sometimes God may give you certain instructions and certain instructions, they vary from one person to another. I've encountered people that God told them not to cut their hair so that they can maintain their prophetic grace. I've encountered people that God told them not to marry <laughs> so that they can maintain their prophetic grace. I've encountered people that God told them not to be collecting offering in their, in their churches <laughs> so that they can maintain prophetic grace. As you continue to grow deeper, to be a prophet, there are some instructions that will be communicated to you. But the instructions, they vary from one person to another. Just because you have received certain instructions from God, they may vary from what I have received. There are people that cannot prophesy unless they are in fasting mood. And there are others that can prophesy even after eating 20 chapatis. They will say, that says the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prophetic instructions vary from one person to another. <laughs> it is God who chooses to do these things. So don't be discouraged when, when let's say, you meet one prophet with certain instructions, and then you meet another one with different instructions, yet they are used in prophetic liams. So even you, as you are watching this broadcast, when God gives you grace to be a prophet, don't worry even if you are given different instructions from what we have. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord may tell you now, I want you to be a missionary preacher. I don't want you to start a church, but I want you to be a mission Others, the Lord will tell you, you have to start a church so that you can maintain this anointing. 
Hallelujah. Others, the Lord will just make you a prophet to support your pastor, your rocker pastor. Hallelujah. Your rocker pastor may not be moving into the spiritual grace of prophecy. Yet you, you have received that mantle. You are supposed to assist the rocker pastor to see the things of the spirit. But that does not give you a guarantee to pride, to say that I can be able to see more than my pastor. So I'm, I'm supposed to be the leader of this church. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. The grace may just to enable you to assist the vision of this servant of God. I know you are worshiping in various churches. Do you know that the Lord can use you in that church as a seer, as a prophet, and can be giving you prophetic messages and prophetic revelations for that church? But that does not make you the, <laughs> the, the read pastor of that church. You are just a serving an office. Prophet and prophecy is an office. And as I once said, that not all believers are called to be prophets, but believers can venture into prophetic realms as we continue to desire as we continue to love this precious gift of prophecy. Hallelujah. If you read the Bible in the book of First Corinthians chapter number 14, verse number 5, I'm now in point number 5. Pray in thanks to kickstart a prophetic word. Praying in thanks to kickstart a prophetic word. For example, if you have ever rode a motorcycle, or you have, you have ever uh, used the uh, ignition of a car, you kickstart the engine with the key. You kickstart the motorcycle with the with the ado. Also in prophecy, you can light up the engine of prophecy through speaking in tongues. You can kickstart a prophetic realm as you continue ministering to somebody through speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter number 14, verse number 5. Uh, I would not that you all speak with tongues, but rather that he prophesied for greater is prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret the church may receive and define. The Bible is saying, it is not that I am against people speaking in, in tongues, but I want you to speak in tongues and then move into prophecy. Hallelujah. It's like, I want you to use the gift of speaking in tongues to kickstart the engine of prophesying or moving into the deeper spiritual cones and passcode of prophecy. Hallelujah. Number six. Be around people who are prophesying. Be around people who are prophesying. That's why if you are not in a prophetic church, you better look for the Spirit of God to guide you to one. Or to guide you to mentor that will be able to give you company in the things of the spirit especially to the things of prophecy if you read the bible in the book of samuel you understand that prophet samuel stayed under eddie prophet samuel was not uh, yet a full prophet but received guidance from Eddie, the man of God. And he also received some guidelines on how to answer when God is speaking to you. A great way to, to touch the prophetic anointing is to be in the presence of those people who are prophesying. Hallelujah. Ka karibu na manabi 
penda ushirika wa manabii haleluya love to connect with people that have this mandate we have great men and women even online some are on television some are on youtube love to listen to whatever they are speaking it will help you to develop your prophetic skills and your talent and your gifting in the name of Jesus. Even so, as you expose yourself to outpouring of the prophetic, the same will happen to you. Let us read First Samuel chapter number 10. First Samuel chapter number 10. Verse number five. The Bible says, After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from praise with the, with the sanctuary and a tablet, and a pipe, and a up. Before them, they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Hallelujah. This was so in the Bible. When he had an incident of rusing the donkeys of his father, but he encountered a prophet of God. And the prophet of God, Samuel, told him, as you are going, you meet a company of prophets, and you shall join them. And when you join them, the spirit of prophesying will come upon you, and you shall be transformed into another man. If you continue reading that chapter, you understand that when Saul reached to that platform. He began to prophesy until the people that were allowed that vicinity, they said, I saw the son of Kish become a prophet also. Hallelujah. It was becoming a prophet as a result of that uh, relationship or encounter. That's why I'm saying love to be, love to be around people who are prophesying. Hallelujah. For those of you that uh, are joining us, Rit, I was talking about how to prophesy or how to move in the prophetic gift. And I, uh, in summary, I said that not all Christian believers are prophets, but Christian believers can receive prophetic messages or they can move into prophetic realms. And number one, I said, for you to exercise your gift of prophecy, you should know that you can prophesy. Know that as a Christian believer, the kingdom of God gives me that authority to prophesy. Number two, desire to prophesy. Number three, look for a vision. Number four, be sensitive to what bubbles up in your spirit. Number five, pray in tongues to kickstart a prophetic word. Number six, be around people who are prophesying. But this is just uh, some of the teachings that I've encountered in my ministry. Hallelujah. And also in my practice and what the Spirit of God has taught me. I know there are various dimensions on how to be a prophet. I'm just sharing a retro. I know we have men and women of God in this platform. There are many things that the Lord has spoken to you. And we shall also give you an opportunity to share out these things. Thank you, people of God, for this time. Maybe next time I'll be speaking more about how you can even uh, be able to experience a prophetic message by virtue of a smell smell but that will be the message for another day if god gives us grace to do so god bless you viewer thank you for attending this memorable moment 
and may the Lord do you good. I want to make a prayer before I give you an opportunity to greet us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of living God, you have given us an opportunity to hear your word through online fellowship, Lord. Lord, during this final moment and end time days, we pray that you may raise men and women that are willing to carry prophetic movement, prophetic anointing, prophetic gift, prophetic power. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of living God. Father, I pray that open spiritual eyes of men and women. Your word says that in the book of Joel, chapter number 2, verse number 25, that days are coming when you shall pour out your, your spirit upon all flesh. Men and women shall see visions and people shall prophesy. Dreams shall carry prophetic messages. Lord, I pray that each and every individual that is watching, Lord, I pray that you may pour more of your prophetic grace, more of your prophetic anointing, more of your prophetic power across the world in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you, viewer, and may the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.